what a manipulator. Like this man, this is why he's so rich, okay? I wasn't gonna do this. I really wasn't. I told myself this season, I'm not gonna talk about nobody. But y'all just keep showing up and doing ridiculous things. So we're gonna talk about it. Leo and Hannah. Now y'all, I'm gonna preface this with saying I am only six episodes in. And I don't know what the future holds for anyone, okay? Hannah has not gotten engaged yet, but I had to stop my binging to come on here and say, what in the world? What is going on here, okay? So if y'all don't know, Leo is an art dealer. We heard it maybe a thousand times. I'm an art dealer. I don't want anyone here for my money. I'm afraid, I'm scared, and I get it. And I'm also going to honor the fact that Leo had a terrible, terrible past. Like I get a lot of his family members passed away. And the thing is, if y'all have been watching my episodes, disorganized attachment is so for real. And I don't want to say he is 100% a disorganized attached child. However, behaviors that I, he's exhibiting as this man, and he's in these situations with Brittany and Hannah, it's really hard for me not to say that he isn't. But before I get into any more tea, hey, 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 Conscious Crew, welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner, where we are unpacking your trauma to heal your relationships. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. Now, let's go. Now, what's this organized attachment? Usually, it's a mixture of anxious attachment and avoidant attachment. And we see here in the pods where Leo is looking for someone to love. Hannah's looking for someone to love. Brittany is into looking for someone to love. And you know when you're watching Love is Blind, there's always gonna be some sort of love triangle that is coming up. This happens to be one of them. I'm actually very surprised. There are so many couples, happy couples. I'm really ex excited for that. But this Leo trifecta here just doesn't work. So Leo is very hot and cold. We're seeing him engage with Hannah. We're seeing him engage with um, Brittany in these conversations. And we know that Hannah loves her some Nick. And y'all, again, I don't know what's, come, what's to come, but what I'm watching unfold is a recipe for disaster, okay? Leo puts poor Hannah in this position, which she also puts herself in, to second guess herself. And a lot of manipulation is coming up for this, this couple or this situationship where Hannah goes in and says, I'm going to break it off with Leo. Leo then says, look, I think I really, you know, I, I really want you. But Leo doesn't make that apparent. Leo is playing the field. He has both Hannah and Brittany at his fingertips. Brittany is over here boohoo crying, her little angelic tears. Unfortunately, she's boohoo crying these little angelic tears. And we see Leo just kind of feeding into it. It's like he wants to be that dominant alpha person in the pod. He wants to make sure Brittany and Hannah are his. But my guy, you only walk away with one woman at the end of the day. One woman has to say yes. You can only ask. Well, technically, you should be only asking one woman. And so I came on here to say, what a manipulator. Like this man, this is why he's so rich, okay? He is dealing art because if he's dealing with these people, like he's dealing with the people that's trying to buy art, this man is never gonna go broke, okay? Never gonna go broke. I sat, y'all, and watched him bring Hannah in to help her second guess. And I understand this is almost like a game, right? It's the battle of the fittest. But Hannah specifically came in and said, Leo, I kind of don't want you. Nick is my guy. And then he blows up at her in the most gentle way, which like he wasn't screaming, but it felt like a gentle blow up in a sense where he's just like, you didn't give me a chance. And what he said made a lot of sense. But at the same time, what he did after just made me think, wow, this guy is good. So here we are, we're in the pods and Hannah's decided that I'm going to tell Leo, you know, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I want Nick to be the person I focus on. When she starts to expel that information to Leo, Leo's just like, what? But Hannah, you're going to just say yes after from the first guy that says, I love you, which he has a point. 
but it's just not any guy. This is Nick. This is Nick who has been professing his love to her for quite some time. This is the Nick that's like, hey, I'm all in. He put away the other girls and said, I'm locking in with, with Hannah. Whereas Leo could not make that commitment. Leo's in this place where he's thinking like, I have these two wonderful women. I have Brittany and Hannah. I want to be with Brittany and Hannah. And I, and I just can't decide who is who and what I want. And so Hannah put on her big girl panties and said, look, I don't want you anymore. And so we're in the pods watching this unfold while Hannah is saying this, Leo's kind of drawing her back in. But what's interesting enough is when we're looking back in the woman quarter, we're seeing that Hannah is, uh, or Brittany is like, I really want to be with Leo, but I don't know who, where he stands. But when he's in the pods with Hannah, he's kind of insinuating like, yeah, I like both of you guys, but I really want to be with you. The way he was pushing her to sway her answer. And so now he has poor Hannah having to go back to the woman quarter, feeling very torn and doesn't know her up from down according to her and it's so sad to watch I even made um a thread saying like I hope these women and men that come into this situation are mentally prepared for the amount of mental warfare that they have to go through because this is an accelerated time like for us we go through this all the time us normal people who are not on love is blind we don't have this short time frame to say yes to someone we don't have this short frame of time to say, I'm going to date you and I have to figure this out now. We have a much longer time. So when you're going into this, I can understand why Hannah felt just kind of like at a loss. But what I don't understand is why Leo would put Hannah through this, this whole stretch her on for this long thing, just to be like the second meeting that night to say, yeah, we had a mutual breakup. The gaslighting was real. Here's what I think happened. Leo wanted a dopamine shot, right? So we know that dopamine is a happy hormone. And when we are feeling threatened, when we have fear and anxiety, the amygdala in your, your, the part of your brain that lights up is your amygdala. And so your amygdala is like, hold on, we got to figure out what's going on. In order to kind of bring it down, to come down your social, central nervous system, you need some sort of dopamine. You need some kind of um, release of cortisol. And so Leo's thought was, I'm going to get Hannah to at least say that she still has feelings for me and not go all in with Nick so that I can bring my stress levels down. A very selfish thing to do, but we are all selfish. We're human. We do it all the time. As I'm watching this unfold, I could not feel any sympathy for how Leo felt with the situation with Hannah because Hannah had a point. The second meeting when we're in these pods, Hannah's saying, you never told me you were all in on me. I had Nick saying he's all in on me. So why would I not go in all with a guy who's already professing his love for me? Why would I wait? And this is the problem, ladies. This is what we're doing all the time. We have a man that is here saying, I want to be with you. And you you like him, but there's this other guy. And you're like, well, I really want to be with him, but he's not telling me what I want to hear. And so you were waiting. But Hannah says, I'm not going to be that person. Why would I wait for you to get to where I need you to be when I have a guy that's already here where I need him to be? This man is already in position. He's locked, trigger ready, ready for pull. And Leo's over here like, what? Yo, this is interesting, okay? Like I said, I had to break my silence. I was not, I promise you, I was not gonna come on here until I had all, everything, until the season was done. I wanted the season to be done. Because I know there's so many people on here like talking about Love is Blind all the time. But y'all know I'm a die hard. And I was like, this season, I want to assess everything from start to finish. But I could not watch this manipulation unfold. Now, I'm not saying like I'm 100% a Hannah fan either. But what I am saying is this man let Hannah go through all of this only to come and play in her face. He came and said, listen... We have this mutual breakup, but now I need you to go big me up to Britney because I'm realizing that I might leave out of here alone. I don't like making predictions, y'all, but I feel like Britney is going to say yes to this man if he proposes. I could be wrong. I don't know much about Britney. I need to, like, assess her a little bit more. But my goodness, this saga is just crazy. There are other couples here that I just, I'm falling in love with their dynamics, I'm loving them to pieces. There is. Um, But I just had to break my silence. I had to come on and say, Leo, you dog. Okay. There was a scene where Leo was just like how he's impressed with Hannah. 
her intellect and her maturity because he believes that there are people who would come in and say like, Leo, you're a dog, you're this, you're that. And I was like, yeah, Hannah's actually doing a really good job. But then to see this unfold and to see how Leo was just being Leo, like, no. And I'm not going, I'm a therapist hat off. I cringe every time I see Leo. I was texting my sister like, if this man don't shut up about him and his money, because you cannot keep saying I don't want her to not love me for my money, but then go in and say like, oh, you're not going to ask me about my job because now you are preemptively going to have her ask you about your job. You're going to want them to know that you have money because then we'll hear drops and I know editing and the producers and how they want it. They have to tell the story. I get it. But then you, we will see different instances. He's in different outfits saying like, yeah, but I got money. That's okay. Brittany might be expensive, but I got money. Oh yeah. I make a lot of money. I have this money. I'm, and he's very fortunate. God rest the people that, or God rest the souls of the people that he lost. I'm taking that away from him because loss is loss. But this is also why I'm highlighting the fact that the disorganized trauma is so real. The attachment that might have happened where he, I don't know his upbringing, but just if Leo sat in my office, I would ask before these people passed away, before these people walk like disappeared from your life because of unfortunate things, what was the emotional connection? Like what was the emotional validation? Like, did you feel secure in these relationships? Because his fear of abandonment from either one of these two people, Brittany or Hannah, it's, it's justifiable, but then it's not. Because of how the last thing I saw with him really playing in Hannah's face saying that, yeah, um, we both agreed. And I know Nick is good for you because a couple of hours ago you were saying you don't know if he's good for you. Why would you say yes to him? So I am really feeling the disorganized attachment here. And I'm just saying, y'all, I'm ready for the ride. If y'all don't want me to wait until the end of the season to say something else, let me know. Because I am trying to, I am trying, y'all, because this is my show. I am trying to not say much, but this was three much. Watching this was three much. Anyway, I have my favorites. I have my people that I'm still like trying to feel out. I have some people that I am just, I cannot wait to break down some of the reactions I saw that people might not have noticed um, when they do the reveal. But yeah, let me know what you think. Am I am I am I going too hard on Leo? Cause I don't think so. But am I going too hard on Leo? Or did y'all see it too? Did y'all see the? Did you experience the disgust that I experienced? And I'm sure he's a wonderful gentleman. I'm sure. And I know when you're in these kind of situations, they put you in this fight or flight, sometimes fawn kind of uh, situation. But I was just like, my guy, you need to calm down your central nervous system in a different way, cause. You putting Hannah in this position was not the way to go. You got your dopamine hit? Cool. But let's do it in a different way next time. Y'all let me know what you think. And there's this for me program I got going on. <laughs> it starts October 28th. It's free, y'all. It is F-R-E-E. -E. No 99, no cents. It's just free. I honestly want to invite you to this comfortable space with other women, successful women, who want to understand the attachment styles and want to unpack some of the wounded burden parts of them that have happened in childhood that they haven't quite seemed to um, get under wraps. They want to be able to do that. And I want to offer you guys that space to do that. I am going to be your relationship and trauma recovery coach because that's what I'm here to do. We're going to do that through therapeutic techniques that are proven. This is not a play play thing, y'all. I'm really sitting here. I'm goofy at times, y'all, because that's just who I am. But when we're working, we're working together. I have some amazing people coming in that are going to help teach you about femininity. Um, and I understand you can sit in your feminine energy at times, but we want to be in our feminine energy at all times so that we can attract the people that we want and we're not chasing them. All right, y'all. Walk good, keep the vibes high, and I will see y'all next episode. Don't forget to click this. Bye.